Hi there everybody. DJI have just released an update for the O3A unit that unlocks 4K 120 frames per second recording. So you might think that this update provides the low latency that we expect from the V1 system with the 4K recording of O3. Well, unfortunately it's not quite that simple. Let me show you some test data and then I'll explain a little more. For those of you who might be new to the channel, let me take a moment to explain to you how I measure the latency of these FPV systems. So to start with, we have to have two LEDs. And these two LEDs are wired up in parallel so that they turn on and off at exactly the same moment. And LEDs are really good for this because they turn on and off in a few nanoseconds. That's a few billionths of a second. And when you wire them up in parallel, they turn on and off exactly together. We take one of these LEDs and put it in front of the FPV camera of our video system, like that. We take the second of these two LEDs and we put it in front of a high-speed camera. I don't use a GoPro, I have a different high-speed camera, but this serves the purpose. So the second LED goes in front of the high-speed camera like that. Then we take the high-speed camera and we put it inside our FPV goggles, just like that. So what we have, the high-speed camera is looking at two LEDs. It's looking at one LED which is directly in front of it and one LED it's seeing through the FPV system. And when both LEDs turn on together, then the high-speed camera sees this LED which is directly in front of it first. Because it's right there, it just gets the light straight into the lens and it picks up that LED immediately with no delay. But this LED, the light from this LED, has to go into the FPV camera, through the video system, out of the screen of the goggles, and then into the high-speed camera. And so what the high-speed sees is this LED come on first, and then a few milliseconds later, this LED come on. And because it's a high-speed camera, we can also see exactly how the light from that LED propagates through the system. And we can see when the first pixel and the first line becomes bright in the goggle screen and exactly how the goggles refresh so that we can see what the latency is to the first bright pixel and the latency to the first full frame as well. So now that we know how the measurement is done, let's take a look at the test data. Here we see the high speed footage from the two goggles side by side. At time zero, both LEDs turn on and of course we see the light from the LED directly in front of the high speed camera immediately. Then we have to wait a few milliseconds for the FPV system to transmit the bright LED that's in front of the FPV camera to the goggle screen and we see that a few milliseconds later. And that time delay between the LED and the goggles turning on and us seeing the bright LED on the screen of the goggles is the latency of the video link. This footage also shows really clearly the difference between OLED and LCD. And I'll put a link down in the video description if you want to learn more about that. All right, so what can this data tell us? Well, let's start with the DJI FPV goggles V2. Now, these work pretty much as you would expect. When you change to 4K 120 frames per second on the air unit, you get 120 frames per second in the goggles and a latency of about 27 milliseconds pipeline and 35 milliseconds full frame. So all good so far, we see an improvement. However, if you're using the DJI Goggles 2 with the new OLED screens, you don't see this happen at all. When you switch to 4K 120 FPS on the air unit, you don't get 120 frames per second in the goggles. You don't even get 100 frames per second in the goggles. You get 60 FPS in the goggles and a latency that's much, much more. So this is something to be very aware of. If you are using the DJI Goggles 2 and you're thinking, should I switch to 120 frames per second to get the lowest possible latency? No, no, you shouldn't. You should stay at 100 frames per second. 100 frames per second is what gives the lowest latency with the Goggles 2 only switch to 120 frames per second if you're using the older DJI FPV goggles V2. Hopefully that helps and make sure that you get the best possible video latency and also the recording quality that you want. 
If you like the work that I do and want to support the channel, then I do have a Patreon. You can join from just a few dollars a month. It helps support all the test work that I do and the videos that I make uh, here on YouTube. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.